of white versus black was created solely for the purpose of separation. And that the real individuals behind the president, behind Congress, the hidden hand, is also melanated nine ether people also. What if I told you that? The individuals you see in the illustration behind me I refer to as the black nobility. These are the original 13 families, okay? These are melanated, carbonated individuals. Everything we've ever been told, okay, in reference to who we believe the enemy is, so to speak, has been solely for the purpose of distraction, okay? Now, again, there are no relevant uh, Caucasian individuals that did wholeheartedly embraced that role, okay, that they were set to play. But this actually derived from our own melanated people selling us out. If you look at some of the old relics from Europe, you'll see that these individuals were black people, okay, that they commemorated, that they highly revered. You could find a lot of the real ancient relics in the Vatican. Um, they had statues and all kind of things to commemorate the black nobility. 13 families all have the blood of the black draconian. Um, the individual you see to my left, and the illustration behind me is referred to as Tarnush or Halal, okay? This was a black draconian. This is who Ra Hayes making reference to when he say, they look like us, but they not us. These are reptilians, okay? And oftentimes they have the pointed ears and a widow's peak as a genetic uh, trait. Free the elder god, Dr. Malachi Z. York, he spoke on these entities in the, uh, in the holy tablets, okay? This is a depiction, okay, of how these individuals look. They're reptilian, they are shapeshifters, and they are black. They are normal melanated. This is a depiction of how some of them may look. They look like us, but they're not us. Here's another example, okay? Black reptilian, black draconian. They figured if they create, if they could create an enemy for us, then we wouldn't uh, think about them, okay? And that's why one of their names, code names, basically is the hidden hand. They don't, they're the biggest secret that most people don't talk about. Tarnush is the son of Marduk, okay? Tarnush wanted some form of cosmic dominion, and when his grandfather Anu, Anu didn't uh, grant that, uh, his request, he, he just completely went disagreeable. And there were others that carried that same ideology. They basically wanted dominion and wanted to have some sort of power, and they wanted to cause chaos and wreak havoc because of that. As I told you in the past, these archonic entities thrive on your low frequency uh, emotions like grief, guilt, anxiety, and things of that nature, fear, okay? So they can't really operate in the 528 hertz frequency, which is love. So it's important that, that uh, you embrace this green Ethereum cosmic energy that's re-emerging, okay? That's the, uh, the essence of the heart chakra energy that's going to come back. And once we fully embody that and we eliminate all racism, all hatred, and we just fully walk in a heart chakra, okay, and follow the laws of my yacht, which your heart being light as a feather, which you're forgetting about anything that you've been taught through the indoctrination process in regards to the simulation, then you will fully ascend and tap into your crown chakra and fully reap the benefits of a Kundalini awakening. You can't do it with hatred. Okay, so I'm um, contrary to what you want to believe. Um, you want to have an enemy and things of that nature. It's understandable, but your biggest enemy is yourself, and your biggest enemy is the uh, indoctrination and a false technology that you've been told. Okay, this also came from Yakub. Okay, remember he was the author of technology, and a lot of this illustration that we still follow in stems from that. If you follow in a concept of hatred or anything along the lines of that, then you are uh, actually going off the teachings and the ideologies of technology, which were orchestrated by Yakub, the scientist. All right. This is one, some of the doctor, doctrines that he came up with on the island of Patmos. OK, Yakub actually was the one that orchestrated and came up with the enemy for us to have some form of uh, adversities with. OK, that, that's, that we can actually see to camouflage the 13 families, the, uh, the black nobility that actually been puppet, puppet master in this whole thing. Thing, controlling this whole matrix, operating this whole simulation behind the bell. Remember, the meek shall inherit the earth, and those who really uh, hone into their true primordial self will reap the benefits of ascension to the fifth dimension, okay? You have to just go inward. You have to tap in with self, and you have to realize that everything you have been taught this whole time has been an illusion to create hatred in, in you and to create uh, some form of uh, diversity and separation amongst the people on this planet. This is important. It says your true work in life is to keep uh, lifting your frequency because everything in your life comes as a result of the vibration you are on. So if you want a vibration of hatred, you want a vibration of revenge and things of that nature, you're going to completely go through what's called the infinity cycle where you're going to completely do incarnations over and over and over again. The trick to breaking out of this matrix is actually go going into the heart chakra so you can then go to the higher dimensional planes of existence because unfortunately these lower realms, you get stuck in the lower realms and the lower ethers if you stay in those frequencies. Peace I'm going to get right to it, man. 2017, I get a call. Guy calls me. He said, I got your number from a good friend. Can I meet and talk in person? I say, okay, we can meet and talk. He gave me the location. I pull up to the location. I get to the location. 
It's inside of a restaurant. I sit down at my. T I sit down at the table. This dude pop out of nowhere. Come up to me, hand me an envelope. He said, "Open the envelope." He said, "This, this, this right here is for seven years." Oh, I think it was five years. Five years. You can't talk about it for five years. I signed it. It's expired now, so I can talk about it. I signed the agreement. The man said to me, he said, Keith, now mind you, I never told him my name, bro. But he knew my name. So he either got that from my client, from the guy I did security before, or I don't know how he got it. But he, but he knew my name. He tells to me, he asks me, what is my worldview on religion? I said I was raised in the church. You feel me? I have my discrepancies with it. But that's why I was raised. Man tells me that all religions on the planet are programs from other beings to keep control of humanity so we don't damage our bodies. Because our bodies are some sort of valuable commodity valuable commodity throughout the universe, I guess. That's what he said to me. So then he goes in to tell me how basically races of other beings from wherever they come from created all of this shit. And we live in a petri dish. And basically they observe us, they monitor us, they harvest us, they harvest the animals, but they eat the same shit that we eat. So he showed me a list of areas where I guess hunters go missing. When the hunters go missing, no trace. When they find them, it's like they just got dropped out of the sky. You see what I'm saying? So he pretty much told me that our government have an agreement with other governments from other realms or dimensions to harvest a certain amount of human beings every year. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what the man said to me, and he was dead serious about this. He made me sign an NDA about this. I'm only speaking about it now because it expired. So when I said in my last interview that I know things that will keep you up at night, this is what I'm talking about. So imagine you living your whole life thinking you're a special individual, and you're really not. You see what I'm saying? That's crazy to think about. So basically, uh, I guess like human beings is some type of worker race invented by somebody, created by somebody else. And within the next six years, they post a return to the planet or something. So like that's why our government is releasing certain information, trying to prepare the masses for what's about to take place. You see what I'm saying? So when, when I say harvest, well, you know, look up any abduction stories about aliens or whatever they call them. They say you know, they harvest people for their they sperm, reproductive organs, and all of that type of activity. So, you know, this this man was a very serious guy, man. I mind you, the man showed me an ID where he worked as a as a at the Pentagon. He said he was a CIA officer. Um, he he's retiring, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you know, the guy's name is John Ramirez who interview I seen, who I was told to watch. So look up John Ramirez, CIA officer, man. You feel me? You know, it's an uncomfortable time of conversation, but it's going down in the world right now, bro. You know, we got right. At the end of the day, this is real. I'm not telling you no lies, no fabricated information, man. You feel me? Just, just stay on point, man. I just watched a video from a Gen Xer who feels like she just woke up. How did we get here? I bought it all. I bought a house, 
I went in the army. I served my country. I'm disabled. I'm trying to get 100% disability because of my pain. And I don't medicate with morphine. I work every day. I have to. At one point in my life, in the not so distant future, I could afford my home with my wife. And now I have two roommates. Like, when only five people have all the money and they just print it when they want to and they just send it away to places that they have special interest in because this whole world is led by evil corporations that feed us garbage. <laughs> Come on, man. The very first, like, I woke up and saw it all for what the f it is. <laughs> I fought for this. Sh I believed it. I thought 9 11 was real. <laughs> what a f joke, man. You think Baltimore was real? You think that bridge just collapsed like that? And the same mother and I went in the army because 9-11, the same mother had an insurance policy on a bridge that randomly got blown to bits by a boat in a building. Has anybody ever thought, yeah, two planes hit those two buildings, but that building just collapsed with no plane hitting it. Meanwhile, passengers like me want to fight for America, take a terrorist at it was bought by a corporation to do this in the beginning they crash somewhere else maybe that plane was supposed to hit that building and they could explain that one away you no know, this is not something i ever was into like i wasn't familiar with like how much dialogue there is about it you know what i'm saying you know i didn't know it was a thing i wasn't know it was a thing at all so you know, in this line of work, you frequent places, bro, that the highest a society go to. So the place I was at is a place in, in Chicago called Studio Paris. Studio Paris is located 59 West Hubbard. It's a restaurant on the first level and the top level is a nightclub. But my favorite nightclub, the most beautiful ladies you ever see, a lot of, a lot of, this is where the who's who go to enjoy themselves, have a good time. Salute to everybody checking in. Everybody that's new to the chat real quick. I'm about to get into the whole situation, the day, the night when I seen the lizard person. So, you know, I always work in tandem with somebody. So I'm working in tandem with my cousin. My cousin, he's a police officer now, uh, so I'm not going to say his name. But if you want to come on here and talk, I'll, I'll line that up. But, you know, very aware guy. And, you know, I, I, I try to line myself up with people that have a lot of integrity is going to tell the truth because hard to build a business based off lies. Now, look, we in the section, we got models in the section, we got lawyers and doctors in our section, we standing on the couches. So we can keep a bird's eye view of everything that's going on. My cousin tapped me. He said, bro, I just seen the devil. What? This is somebody who don't joke. He very literal. It's like somebody who play around. So for him to say to me that he just seen the devil, I'm like, okay, what do you mean by that? He said, bro, she had a long tongue and her face was covered in scales, looked like, like, a, like a snake. So I'm listening to him. I'm listening to the man. I'm looking him in his eyes. I'm looking him in his eyes because I got to make sure he's not drunk and shit like that. His bottle ain't been spiked. You got to check all of this type of shit. So I say, where did you see this person? He pointed across from us in, in another section. Okay. I look across. What do I see? I seen a person. Bald, 
scales, like brownish green scales over the face. Tongue, like the tongue was like, like licking on the side of his face. On this side, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You see what I'm saying? Hell yeah, I am. Hell yeah, I am. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, man. It shocked me to my soul, like, and it made my heart race. My heart don't really race like that, man. Because, you know, I'm used to being in tough, crazy situations. Everybody always say, you know, I got ice water in my veins. People always say that. So check this out. Me and this person make eye contact. And I say, you know what? I'm going to step down and I'm going to go over here and see if I can see. Close. Maybe it's a mask. Maybe there's somebody with body modifications. You see what I'm saying? Check this out. If I'm lying, I'm flying on the game. I step down, I go across, and I see this person still looking at me. Now, when I get close, though, she stepped behind the guy. And now it's a normal lady again. But she's smiling at me, though. So I reached out, and I, and I tried to shake her hand. Now, when she touched my hand, her hand was cold, like, she was cold, like, ice cold. And the look that she gave me was like, okay, this person knows what they saw. But I didn't make a scene, you feel me? I ain't make no scene or nothing. But my cousin was shook up to the core. Like, you know, this was the last time he really came out with me. Like, that was his last time coming out with me. You feel me? Once he, because he saw this person first. Now, the reason I say person, because, you know, I don't know if, what's a, a, if it's an alien. I don't know if this is a shapeshifter. I don't, I don't know what any of that shit is, man. You feel me? I'm from the street, bro. I'm from the trenches, bro. I've mean, I, I seen real monsters. But this person, they, that person that day looked like a real creature, bro.